I'm Peter Hendler. I'm the uh, clinical engagement lead for SNOMED for the Americas. I was a practicing rheumatologist at Kaiser Permanente in Northern California. And I'm Charles Guttridge, clinical engagement lead for SNOMED CT in Europe. I was a practicing hematologist, uh, but we now both work on SNOMED CT. We're going to take you through the next step in the use of SNOMED CT. So many clinicians across the globe now use SNOMED CT at the point of care to record uh, the, the concepts about somebody's illness. But we'd like to show you how you can use SNOMED CT to do data analytics, either at population health level or more particularly in the clinic to help your patients. And this demonstration is to show that. Before we do the demonstration, I will give a brief presentation explaining what SNOMED CT is and how it differs from other terminologies. SNOMED CT is a way of representing thoughts, thoughts about healthcare. So first, we'll start with this slide, which shows a circle which is representative of a thought of anything in the universe. Then we're going to give this thought a unique numerical code. And this will be the handle that no matter what language or what country you're in, you can refer to this thought. So the words in America may be quite different than the words in France. Now we take this thought and we connect it to other thoughts. So if we say that this thought with this particular code is a kind of disorder, and disorder is also a thought with a code, we can say that it has the finding site of the lung structure, and then we can say that it has a pathological process, which is an infectious process. Well, if you think about it now, even before it has words that can be talked about, because of the connection, we're talking about a disease of the lung that is infectious or a lung infection. Now, SNOMED is different than all other terminologies because in all of the other terminologies, and specifically in the ICD terminologies, you have words which are connected to numbers, but they don't have relationships like this. They don't have finding site or pathological process. Now to make it easy in any given language to talk about this thought, we give it a name. Again, unlike other terminologies, we have one name which is considered the fully specified name, one name which is the preferred name, but we're allowed to have any number of synonyms. So this idea can be called an infectious disease of lung disorder. It can just be called infectious disease of lung. It can be called pulmonary infection, or it can be called a lung infection. Now, when you have a thought connected to other thoughts, you can break that down so that you have a thought, lung infection, is a disorder. And this is called a triplet. And you can also say that the same thing, lung infection, has a finding site, which is lung structure. And this is another triplet. And the reason I show this is because this is one common way to take the knowledge of SNOMED and even clinical knowledge and store it on computers so that it can be analyzed and looked at. And this, in fact, is called RDF, or Resource Definition Framework, or OWL, which stands for Web Ontology Language. They are based on triplets like this. Now, Sometimes you might want to find all of the patients that have a particular thing which is not already in SNOMED. So what you can do is you can make up just for one time your own temporary term, which is based on ideas related to each other, and the software will be able to find all of the children of that. So for example, let's say I wanted something which is a disorder that had associated morphology, inflammation, a finding site of joint structure, and a pathological process of autoimmune. 
I could name this query autoimmune arth arthritis. And even if it didn't exist in SNOMED, I would still be able to make this kind of a query, which means question, and then I would be able to find all of the subtypes of this, such as rheumatoid arthritis, writer's disease, um, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, and many others of which I might not be able to think of on my own. Now to get to how we could do clinical data in the same kind of model. We can start with a patient, and the patient can be related to a number, and the name of the relationship could be has medical record number. Then that same patient with a medical record number could have an encounter, which is an outpatient visit. The outpatient visit probably is connected to a date and time and location but it's also connected to a diagnosis, in this case, lung infection, and this could be a SNOMED term with a SNOMED code. So if we had this kind of relationship where a patient with a medical record number had an encounter with a diagnosis of lung infection, we can also then assume that this medical record number is related to a diagnosis, in other words, to a SNOMED code. And Peter, it, it's important, isn't it, to, to, for every patient to have encounters because the process of care is determined by time. And so we, as, as doctors and as administrators of health, have always got to have something that puts treatment and diagnosis into context against the time of a patient's life. Is that correct? That is correct. And you can also, besides encounters, you can have a chronic problem list, and then you can have the medical record numbers related to diagnoses on the problem list. So that's another way that medical record numbers are commonly linked to SNOMED terms. And so having a really comprehensive and complete problem list is a crucial thing for all medical records. It's certainly crucial if later you want to do something like what we are going to demonstrate, where you're going to require that kind of linkage in order to answer a very complex clinical problem. I'd like to point out that even though most clinicians are not aware of SNOMED CT, that very often it is embedded in their medical record systems. In fact, in the United States, because of meaningful use, there was a requirement that you would be able to produce what's called a CDA document that used SNOMED to code the problem list when you were going to send a report to another organization. Now, very often, what the doctor sees in the medical record system is a drop-down list of terms, and the terms that he sees are called the interface terminology, but in the background, they are linked to SNOMED CT in all cases, at least in the United States that have records, uh, medical record systems that are compliant with meaningful use. And it's also the case in the UK that now SNOMED CT is the underlying terminology uh, used by all general practitioners. And in quite a number of our hospitals, SNOMED CT is the underlying terminology. There are 37 uh, member countries that uh, have licenses for the use of SNOMED across the globe. And SNOMED CT is now being adopted in Australia, New Zealand, many of the Asian countries, uh, and uh, in South America, as well as North America. So it is a widely used uh, way of uh, recording medical information and can be translated from one language to another using the structure of the language. So we're now going to turn our attention to the use of SNOMED CT to solve a clinical dilemma. It is very common to be in a clinic with a patient where one simply doesn't know the best thing to do without some additional data. SNOMED CT can be used to solve these kinds of problems, and we're going to take you through a specific example. We have created a test clinical database with a million 
patient records in it. And we're going to extract the SNOMED CT data that has been added to that record and use that for uh, an, an analytical problem. I'd like you to imagine that you're in a rheumatology clinic and I'm about to see a patient with rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is a form of autoimmune arthritis. It's very common. It causes joint uh, inflammation and joint destruction over time. Sometimes that can be treated by surgical replacement of a joint. Sometimes the pain can be treated with simple analgesics. And then there are more complicated treatments that have been developed over many years that suppress the autoimmune uh, process and help patients resolve the pain. But that can be a very challenging proposition and takes time to do. New treatments are coming online all the time, and I'd like to ask a question from our database about that new treatment. Now, my patient is more complicated because they've been a lifelong smoker and have developed what used to be called chronic bronchitis and is now called chronic pulmon obstructive pulmonary disease. All patients with uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease have a risk of developing infections because of the scarring and chronic damage to the lung. Uh, pneumonias are uh, exceedingly dangerous to any person, but even more so in patients with multimorbidity or a range of other conditions. Well, your problem is a problem of multiple morbidity where a patient has one disease, which is a very serious disease and really needs to be treated, but another disease which makes the treatment of the first disease more dangerous because the treatment for the first disease can actually increase a risk of the second disease and make it worse than it already is. In your case, you have the autoimmune arthritis, which has to have an immunosuppressive agent in order to make the arthritis better. And the second disease, which is the lung disease and makes you prone to have an infection of the lung, you will be making that risk even worse by giving the immunosuppressive disease for the rheumatoid arthritis. So, Peter, in, in this case, the drug I am thinking about using... Which is a TNF inhibitor. Which is a TNF inhibitor. Uh, and all the data shows that it's very effective to treat autoimmune arthritis, but it is also a powerful immunosuppressive. Right. So this is a classic case where helping one disease hurts the other disease, and this is how we're going to approach it. We're going to first have to find in our database all of the patients that have anything that is a disease, and what I'm talking about now are like the ideas on the slides that I showed. We're going to search for anything that is a disease that has finding site joint structure and has pathological process autoimmune. Now, that does not already exist in SNOMED as a um, predefined concept, but we will use that query to find all of the patients that, like yours, have any form of autoimmune arthritis that might be treated with TNF. So we're, we're going to have the rheumatoid arthritis of your patient, but we're going to have the psoriatic arthritis and the other ones too. And because we've got completed problem lists in all of our uh, patients, we're, we will we're going expect to, to find all of those patients. We will find all of those patients, even if there are autoimmune diseases that you and I cannot think of right now. Yeah. Then, once we find all of those patients, then we're going to find a subset of them that also have a disease with finding site lung structure with disease course, chronic. Now, that's going to limit from our one million patients down to a much smaller number. And we're going to take that group, which is our primary group that we're interested in, we want to cut them and divide them, probably not in half, but we want to divide them into who has been given a TNF inhibitor and who has not been given a TNF inhibitor. And now, the real thing that we really want to know is, 
of the ones with both disease that have gotten a TNF inhibitor, how many of them got a disease of finding site lung structure with causative agent bacterium, which is another way of saying a bacterial lung infection. And we're going to compare that to the group that has both diseases that never got the TNF inhibitor that also have a disease of finding site lung with causative agent bacterium because they would get the uh, they'd get lung infections anyway. And then when we have these two numbers, we want to compare them and that will give us an idea of how much risk we're adding to the patient's already bad risk of getting a lung infection. And then knowing the numbers, you will be able to go back to your patient and discuss with them, this is what your risk is now. This is what your risk will be if I treat you. If I treat you, your arthritis will be better, but your risk of lung infection will go up by this amount. If I don't treat you, you will continue to be in pain, but your risk will remain at this baseline amount. Because of the way that SNOMED CT works, we will make these what are called queries or pulling out these cohorts using only the relationships that we talked about earlier in the slides. And remember that SNOMED is the only terminology with relationships. We could not do this with any other terminology. For example, in ICD world, a bacterial infection of the lung is considered a respiratory disease, but it cannot be also considered an infectious disease because as a statistical um, terminology, it's only allowed to have one parent. But SNOMED is allowed to do whatever is logically true. So a bacterial infection of the lung is an infectious disease and it is also a respiratory disease. So I suppose one way of summarizing that, Peter, is, is to simply say that it is possible to compute the outcomes for people using SNOMED CT. And we are about to do that. And, and, and when I think about what I'm going to say to my patient about this, I'm going to make two points, I think. One is that I'm going to use real world data from the environment in which that person lives, using the data in the community that I have from my electronic health records. And secondly, I'm going to try and simplify it a bit by saying, you've got rheumatoid arthritis. I can give you a treatment that will almost certainly improve your joints but has a risk of producing pneumonia. And I'd like to be able to discuss with you how big the danger of you getting a pneumonia is. Does that make sense? It does make sense. And I am going to point out that I have run this same scenario on real data at the University of Nebraska, and also at, from data of the National Health Service from the research consortium called Odyssey OHDSI. But the data that we're using here today is simulated data, and I say that so that people watching this video will not treat their patients according to the answers we get today. So what we have here is a tool which was written by snomed.org, and it will allow us to define subsets using the snomed roles or snomed relationships. And then after that, we make the relationships, the, uh, the queries, we will then go to the medical record system in the cohorts tab and we'll pull out the actual patients and the numbers of patients. So let's get started. I am going to name this subset autoimmune arthritis. And I'm going to first ask for anything that is a disease. And I want this to have a finding site, which is joint structure. Now the word structure in SNOMED is an interesting word because what it means is that it's any joint, all of the joints, any part of one joint. In other words, 
it includes part of, entire, one, two, anything that has to do with the joints. So structure means uh, anything having to do with. And right now, because I'm searching for a disease of finding site joint structure, the way I have it right now, this would be any disease of joint. But what I really want is something that has a pathological process of autoimmune. And just to reinforce, Peter, this is using the built-in logical structure of SNOMED CT. You're not writing these terms down. You're using the structure that is there. Yes, and what I also want to say is if uh, you're watching this video and you're saying, well, that's quite all right for you to happen to know that there's a such thing as finding site and pathological process, that if you just go to Google and you just type in I-H-T-S-D-O space browser, you will come to the SNOMED browser. I'm going to take the first hit. I'm going to agree to this, and I'm going to accept this. I'm going to hit the Go Browsing button, and I'm going to type in rheumatoid arthritis, And then what I'm going to do is go to this side and look at the diagram. And what you'll note, let me move this out of the way. What you'll note is that rheumatoid arthritis has a pathological process of autoimmune. It has an associated morphology of inflammation and it has a finding site of joint structure. Now, the reason why this is important is you don't have to memorize everything that exists in SNOMED in order to use a tool like the tool I'm using, because all you have to do is come here. Now, let's type in pneumococcal pneumonia, and then let's look at its diagram. And you'll see that it has a pathological process, which is an infectious process, a morphology, associated morphology of inflammation, a finding site of lung structure, and a causative agent of streptococcus. So I, I take this little side road to show people that you don't really have to memorize SNOMED in order to use this tool. So here we have autoimmune arthritis, which is a disease of finding site joint structure and pathological process, autoimmune. And I save that. Now, the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to find to have all the people with chronic lung disease. You're putting labels for right. uh, arbitrary a, a labels. A cohort of patients that we're going to find. Right. Something that is meaningful to me. Yes. and that I can remember. So for chronic lung disease, I want anything that is a disease that has finding site. And again, now, how did I know it was finding site? Well, I just showed you on the uh, browser how you can figure that out. Lung structure. At this point, it's any disease of lung, right? Yes. But what I want is chronic lung disease. So now I just write course, and that means that'll find for me clinical course, and I want that to be chronic. Okay. So anything that is a disease of the lung that is chronic is a chronic lung disease. So let's save this subset. And that will include all the patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, it will all indeed. chronic bronchitis, all of those conditions will it be listed. It will indeed. Now, let's just call this TNF agent, and it'll be... anything that is a tumor necrosis factor alpha 
anti-tumor necrosis factor alpha drug product. Okay? Yeah. We'll save that. Because that's what I'm actually going to prescribe to the patient. Right. And then the very last thing we're going to look for is lung infection, or I'll call it back arterial lung infection, and that'll be anything that is a disease. See how this is getting to be familiar? Yeah, I'm getting used to it now. And now we want a finding site of what? It will have to be the lung, because yes. we're interested in episodes of pneumonia. The lung structure. And finally, we need one more thing, and this is, we saw this on our pneumonia thing. It's called so causative agent. We want a causative agent. So lung infections can be a virus or bacteria, but in this case, we want bacterial infections. Right. So let's see if we find that. And now we'll save this subset. And we should be ready to go. So we go to the cohorts. Now, this is where we get into the actual clinical data, the one million patients. So first, let's just pick arbitrarily, let's pick all of the patients that have autoimmune arthritis. And this is the definition that we just made. And for fun, we're going to fetch the cohort. And here we have 65,000 patients or so that have some kind of autoimmune arthritis. But now we want to add a refinement. And of the refinement, we want to say that they have chronic lung disease. Here's the one we just made. And now we fetch the cohort, and that's people that have both autoimmune arthritis and chronic lung disease. And now we're down to just under 9,000 patients here. And now we go to... And that's because yeah. they're both common conditions, aren't they? Rheumatoid arthritis and chronic pulmonary disease right. are, are, are pretty common in the population as a whole. Right. So in other words, if 1% of the population had rheumatoid arthritis, and this is not true, but just saying, if 1% had the second disease, then what we would be looking at is 1% of 1%. So now we're going to add the test. Now, the test is going to be whether or not they got a product, which is the TNF agent that we just defined. And that will divide our group into two, those that have or have not gotten that. But what we really want to know is the outcome, which is bacterial lung infection, which we just did. And now I'm going to run the test. And here's the answer. The answer is that out of our population of 1,065,273 patients, simulated data, that 8,908 had autoimmune arthritis and a chronic lung disease. Of those, 44.6%, or 3,969 patients, took a TNF agent. Now, this is already very useful information to you because now you know that if you give this patient the TNF agent, you're not the first doctor in the whole world that ever did that. That a significant number of doctors in this difficult situation did give the agent. Now, of the ones who did take the agent, 5.3% or 212 developed a bacterial lung infection. So this would include not only pneumococcal pneumonia, but Klebsiella pneumonia, Pseudomonas, anything. Of the remaining 4,939 patients who did not take the TNF agent, 2.2% got pneumonia anyway. That's 100. So there's an patients. underlying risk of getting yes. pneumonia, whatever you are, which, of course, we all know. So what's the excessive risk, then, if I give the immunosuppressive Well, by dividing agent? the 5.3 by the 2.2, then you see that you're increasing the risk approximately 2.4 times. But you can see that the risk is um, really only 
increased by 3.1% in this example. Peter, that's amazing. We've used real-world data from our electronic health record. The information this gives me to be able to talk to my patient about uh, the risks and benefits of treatment are really astonishing. And I can do it in real time, really simply. And to do this kind of study without SNOMED, you would have to get a group of experts which would come together and make lists of codes, not using the logic, but just using their memory and their knowledge in order to pool these kinds of cohorts. But here, because of our ability to make the subsets using roles, even if we were not experts in infectious disease or whatever, we could use the, the internal structure of SNOMED as if we were experts to pull in these accurate and comprehensive cohorts in order to do this kind of complex research. And we can apply this technology to a really very wide range of clinical scenarios which are real and cause uh, really a, a, a tension in the clinic where you don't know what's best to do for a patient. In this example, we did something that was helping an individual doctor. But again, if we did this on enough data and it was real data, you could publish this and do, uh, and this would be publishable research um, because it is quite useful to clinicians in general. So this particular tool was built by um, the SNOMED organization for us to make uh, demonstrations. But in fact, the University of Nebraska uses something called Neo4j. And although it doesn't have the same beautiful interface, they can basically do the same logic. And Odyssey, OHDSI, which stands for the Observational Health Data Sciences and Informatics Consortium, which is a large international consortium, also uses SNOMED in a similar way to do retrospective clinical research. Now, if at any of your institutions you are interested in learning more about this and perhaps doing this kind of research on your own data, please contact us because it is not conceptually very difficult to set up a system which will allow you to do this kind of complex clinical analysis easily on your own data. I've got very used to having professional coders code the information from the electronic health record. Uh, in the UK, they've used ICD-10. In the States, they now use ICD-10 to do that. I think uh, actually doctors do more coding in the US than in the UK, but we have a terminology that defines and classifies the incidence of disease. Could we do this study uh, in the same way using ICD-10? We could not, and uh, unfortunately, most people doing this kind of research are not familiar with SNOMED and the way the roles work. But with ICD, we would have to know, first of all, exactly what the term was named. Now, that can be difficult because think about lung infection. It could be called lung infection. It could be called pneumonia. It could be called pulmonary infection. Let's take kidney diseases. You can refer to the kidney as nephro, as in nephrolithiasis, renal, as in renal stone, or kidney, as in kidney stone. And there are no relationships. So in order to get the cohorts, you have to know how they were arbitrarily named in the cases that I just went over. And then you would have to know um, all of the types, for example, of bacterial lung infection, there would be quite a few you would have to go, go through. Whereas with SNOMED in the roles, all you have to do is say causative agent bacterium and you will get every kind of pulmonary infection. So the answer is no, you cannot do this efficient, easy, powerful kind of research using ICD. You must use SNOMED because it is the only terminology that has these kind of roles or 
what are called relationships that are so useful in pulling cohorts. Without getting too technical, Peter, the reason that underlines that is there is logic built into SNOMED, which helps you or helps uh, computation of these problems. Is that right? That is right. And SNOMED, it turns out, SNOMED predates what is called OWL or web ontology language. But it turns out that it's exactly the same. And so SNOMED can be modeled and represented as OWL, and in fact, SNOMED, the organization, is re in future releases will release OWL representations of SNOMED so that any tooling that works with web ontology language will also be able to work with SNOMED. So putting it really simply, what this technology allows you to do is essentially a Google search on medical problems. Right. Now, individual clinicians, if they wanted to put in a little effort, could learn how to do this themselves. But another way that I might uh, envision this is that there would be certain physicians at every institution that were interested enough that they would learn how to do this. And then their colleagues, when they had a problem, would ask them essentially for an informatics consult. And not every clinician would be required to learn about SNOMED or about roles. Peter, we live in exciting times. Thank you for that really excellent demonstration of how to use SNOMED to solve a complex clinical problem. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.